impressive win. The defense, even though statistically, if you looked at the numbers, it wasn't that impressive. The defense, I thought, played really, really well. Uh, they did. You're talking about guys making plays. I tell you, Will Compton coming off the bench, you know, he could have had two or three picks, but his interception was timely. And I and I and I was said it on uh, Comcast Sports Net the other night that if you can't you can't go 15 minutes uh, without talking about Fuller. That kid continues to make plays. He was a, we were a little nervous about him last year because I think he was playing not completely healthy coming off a of knee. But this year he always seems to be in the right place, anticipating where the balls go. His pick was pretty impressive, and I was excited about the whole thing in general. Pretty, pretty pumped up when I saw D. Hall there, not only catching punts, but back there in the secondary, making tackles and, and bringing his type of um, uh, just belief and, and knowledge to the game. And Josh Norman and all those guys out there were just playing great football in the secondary. And the linebackers are physical at the point of attack. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what was pretty impressive, learning that uh, Brown was the sprint champ at UNC. Surprised right. me that a linebacker had that type of speed in the 55 meters. I don't think the fans at home really know how fast that is. You run against guys at Clemson and Florida State. For him to have that type of record in college is amazing. Shows his type of athleticism. Yeah, that guy's just an absolute freak. But I want, but I also want to get to your point about D. Hall, and I mentioned this today. So he's uh, – which, okay, that's an old – older football guy but he's in such phenomenal shape uh and you know you look at a guy like rod woodson that made that transition he played till it was like 38 39 i always assumed that this was kind of it this was the swan song for d uh but the way he kind of showed on sunday i'm thinking he might still be able to do this for a couple more years yeah and he can i think that the hardest part when you get to um, this late in your career, and especially when you start to get back-to-back injuries, is, is the motivation of why do you, you know, he doesn't need to go back out there. But, you know, to fight through the Achilles injuries and come back out there and be around with the young guys out there running around, it, it shows you that he still loves the game, enthusiasm for the game. So uh, he, he could play two, three years easily, especially at the safety position where all he has to do is sit back and read coverages and then break on the ball. So how do you see this playing out in terms of the rotation of guys? So is Mon- where are we with Monte Nicholson? He missed last week, right? Uh, like yeah. when he comes back, how do you see this working? So D Hall gets some looks, uh, Monte, and uh, you know everybody else there on the secondary. Well, that's a good problem to have when you're starting to get to. We've been we've been. Uh, wounded over there on the offense and defense side of the ball. But when you start to get guys back, that's a, that's a that shows you that you have the depth. So if, I thought Nicholson probably is the guy who's probably going to come back to the lineup and you have D. Hall. But however it works out, you still got you got a young athletic kid who's hungry, who's running around, and you got a veteran out there who can make adjustments and calls and uh, still play uh, at a high level. So it, it, the coaching uh, has to make a decision, but that's a good problem to have in the back end. So when you look at the NFC, the Eagles are eight and one, right? So they're obviously the, the class of the NFC. Are you are you a believer in the Eagles, or are they just the best team in a in a kind of an average conference? Because when I look at all the division leaders, Vikings, Saints, Rams, yeah, they're good. I mean, they're winning the majority of their games, but I don't look at any of those teams really and go, man, that's a Super Bowl winner right there. I see a Super Bowl contender. Eagles, like <laughs> Eagles, maybe I do, but. I don't know how much of a believer I am in them. Well, the Eagles are the real deal because Carson Wentz is the real deal. Right. I mean, I mean that this kid is absolutely um, the, the, the best young quarterback coming up in the NFL, and he's going to continue to improve. He's made tremendous strides from the first year to the second year. But if you look at their teams and Fletcher Cox and where those guys can get get pressure and guys playing in the back end with my, led by Malcolm Jenkins, the Eagles look like a team to beat in the NFC. If I if I had to pick right now. I mean, they, they beat up on Kansas City pretty good. We thought it was a pretty good team. I mean, these guys are um, – they got all the right tools, you know, as far as the receivers and tight ends <laughs> and running backs. Making that trade with the Dolphins was a big move for their running game. So that you can tell they, they're stacking their team to make a run down the stretch. But Philly lost to Kansas City. They lost to Kansas City after they beat Kansas City. No, that's well, I'm their... wrong with that. Well, they well, they only have they they beat everybody else. Then I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that was their... maybe that was the only that was the only loss. Then to that's their only loss, Kansas City, right? Right. Sorry about that. But that's wouldn't you? But wouldn't you agree? Like the the rest of the NFC besides the Eagles, the rest of the NFC is just kind of flat, just average. 
Yeah, you, you could argue that the Saints with Drew Brees get you down to New Orleans. It's going to be a problem with home field advantage. So, you know, it's hard to beat the Saints down uh, down in the dome down there, and, and Drew Brees is hot right now, and their running game is, you know, although Agent Peterson left to go to the, the Cardinals, their running game is, is emerging, and those guys look pretty good. And I, I am, I, I, just like you guys, I'm for everyone's probably shocked about the Rams. Sean McVay has motivated those guys. They got Jared Goff. Uh, playing some good football, and, and Gurley's a, a talented uh, running back, and they mm-hmm. got some weapons on the outside, but they're beatable. But, I mean, it, it, you're right. You're absolutely right. I, I think it's going to come down to the home field advantage. The thing, the thing for the NFC East is so tough is the Eagles way out there, and you got the Cowboys. If Ezekiel, man, you think was getting suspended that week, continues to play, the Cowboys will win.